Little update and story on El Salvador. So, El Salvador is, or used to be, a very dangerous country because the homicide level was very high. It was probably one of the highest in the world. Um, the thing is, a year ago, in three days, a lot of people died. Hey, this is Next Meridian. We are Nick and Mathilde and we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender, Albatross. Three years, seven continents, 88 countries, and just the road as a home. If you had asked me one year ago if we were going to go to El Salvador, I probably have said, not sure. Gang activities and skyrocketing homicides rates, that's about the only information advertised on the country outside the region. And clearly, it was factually true until a year ago. But since we arrived in the region of Central America, as we talked about El Salvador, people would only mention how nice the beaches are and how good their national dish pupusa is. Wait, aren't they forgetting about security? Well, things changed and changed a lot. So this week we tried to understand what changed and answer the question, is it really dangerous to travel in El Salvador? Okay, we just arrived at the border in uh, Guatemala to El Salvador, so now we are exiting uh, Guatemala. I came and I queued up behind all these cars. Here it says uh, vehicles leaving, verification area, and over there it says um, border control. So let's go find out. And this is the border between Guatemala and El Salvador. Hey Nick. Welcome to Guatemala. No. Welcome to El Salvador. Good morning, El Salvador. Elle est vraiment grosse. Elle est trop mignonne. Il a des oreilles, non? Il a des oreilles. This one too is big. Welcome to El Salvador. So yesterday we crossed the border and just after that we looked for a place to camp. We found these beautiful fields. Um, to find this place we just asked a, a person who was living in a house not far from here if it was loud, if it was secure and he was like no problem, people here won't bother you, blah blah blah. So we stayed here. It's uh, quite interesting because before we left for this trip uh, and people were asking us, are you scared of a region in the world? I would always say, oh, maybe I'm a bit scared of Central America. And in particular, El Salvador was one of them because we always hear about the high crime rate. So since we've been in Central America, I've been proven wrong on many places. And so I'm looking forward to discovering uh, this week what El Salvador really is about and if it is really more dangerous than other places in the world. So it's going to be an interesting week and we're probably going to wear, to learn a lot like usual. Are you happy to go in El Salvador? Yes, very. Are you scared of El Salvador? Not at all. Nick is scared of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> not nothing, but I'm not too worried about most places. So yeah, I think we'll be fine. We'll mm -hmm. see. Let's go. Let's do it. And as usual, our first stop in a country is focusing on planning the rest of our road. Contrarily to a random and creepy roadside, this time it was a luxury planning stop. So as usual, we don't plan really our trip in advance, so we entered El Salvador and we're doing El Salvador planning yeah. at the thermal sources. This is like 35 degrees. Enjoyable, no? Yeah. 9.30, hot shower. What's the plan for today? The idea is after the thermals, we're going to drive for an hour and a half. Uh, and then we're gonna hike another volcano and sleep next to a big lake, which uh, which looks really nice. So that's it. That looks cool.
stopping in the city of Santa Ana uh, because before the volcano we have a priority. We want to try Salvadorian pupusa. Pupusas. We discovered the city of Santa Ana and the feel of a city in El Salvador, really. Our favorite by far are the sellers posted on the back of pickup trucks or little trucks, like a moving market stall selling you anything you need on the go. And I learned that pupusa are eaten in the evening, so we looked all around town, but it's more like an afternoon thing. So 4 p.m. onwards, they said. Yeah. So what is pupusa though? Pupusa is like um, it's like a galette with like cheese, beans inside, verduras. It depends what you do. Okay. What you do. But we'll try that. And yeah, but this little comedor is very cute. Pupusas, we will find you. Not today, but one day we will. We take the road again and leave the heat of the city and the valley behind and drive up above the shores of the lake Coatepec toward the base of the highest volcano of the country, Santa Ana. Second night in El Salvador, this time we slept on a trailhead parking because we assume there's enough people passing by that they don't want any trouble. And no problem, right? Nope. No problem. problem. So now we're going to hike Santa Ana, the, I think, highest mountain in El Salvador. The highest indeed, but not really hard. A treat after the high slopes of Guatemala. But the reward at the top was top. We made it to the top. We made it to the crater. 2,380 meters. And it was not so difficult. It took us, let's see, an hour to get up. Wow, this was fast. And. It's like Iceland. Right, it's really just like Iceland. There's a few murals down oh, yeah. there. This is the best view. How beautiful is it? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Getting good drone shots. Wow. Santa Ana is a very good example of how the situation of El Salvador security-wise evolved. Just a few months ago, to do this hike, you still needed a police escort and a guide. Now we were able to just pay the entry of the park and climb on our own. What happened, right? Uh, it's like this all over El Salvador, and that's the news we've heard since we're in Mexico. There's been a change in... Uh, the way the government deals with security. We learned more on this topic as we traveled, so let us come back more on that later in the video. In the meantime, as we go down from Santa Ana, we experience a new fail in our quest for pupusas. Little side of the road lunch, and Nick is trying the salsa picante. Super strong. Super strong. What yeah. do you have here? At this point, we wind down the mountains and head to the beach. 
As we go down, the temperature rises and streets pack up with cars. It is now the busiest time of the Holy Week and the entire country is on holidays at the beach. Not the best time to be discovering the coastline of El Salvador. So we're in the traffic jam of Holy Week here in uh, El Salvador. So everyone is on holidays from the Wednesday to the Sunday. And so <laughs> we found ourselves like a beautiful mango on the side of the road. The most famous points of the shore being entirely saturated, we continue in search for a more quiet spot until we literally reached the end of the road. What? Warm! So warm! River water. We've not been super lucky on the beach side in El Salvador. It's Hollywood, it's super busy, there's people everywhere. So we struggled to find a place to stay. We ended up here, which is, it seems, a holiday place for Salvadorians, which is pretty cool, but the camp spot is not amazing. No, but it's cool. It's nice. And um, hopefully we find Pupusa for dinner. Yeah, we really want Pupusa. So that's the place. That's why we need to be saying it's nice, but it's busy. There's a lot of people. And yeah, it's not super clean. So nice, but not great. But the cool thing we realize is that there's also just so many people who are curious about the trip that we actually meet a lot of people. Some people gifted us mangoes here. They saw Nick working on the tire rotation. By the way, he's under here greasing transmissions. Uh, and they were like, okay, here are some good mangoes. So we have desert for tonight. And then we got the police who stopped by and asked questions, but like super nice too. That afternoon, we had the most interesting discussion with the police on how their job changed since a year and how they perceive security in El Salvador at the moment. And we can tell you, they feel the change. That's also when we captured this legendary thumbnail on this photo. So yeah, um, it's not the most beautiful spot, but we do meet a lot of people, which makes for a nice experience. Wee, gracias. Gracias. Cheers. Ah, muy bien. Two fun facts to know about pupusas. One, it's the national dish of El Salvador and as a result there's a national pupusa day and it's in November. So wherever you are in, your, in the world and if you have a Salvadorian neighbor, they will do pupusa on that day. And the second fun fact that I discovered writing pupusa on my phone is that when you write pupusa, there's a pupusa shape emoji and I'm not joking. I will show you. ¿Y qué hay adentro? Lleva queso, queso, chicharrón Ajá. y frijol. ¿Y qué tipo de queso es? Es quesillo especial. Ah, quesillo especial. Ok, ok, ok. Después lo cocina aquí. Acá. Ah, ok, ok. Gracias. Es, es la primera uh, pupusa <risa> que voy a comer. Ah, esa sí, es tu primera. Sí, y todo el mundo me dice cuando vas a El Salvador tienes que probar uh, las pupusas. Sí. Ah, ¿Qué son tus preferitas? 
eh, frijol con queso. Frijol con queso, ok, ok, ok. Hicimos un orden de queso, Ajá, queso con ¿sí? frijol y queso con frijol y chicharrón. Así Ajá, que podemos este, comparar. Este. Y es uh, maíz, ¿no? No, son arroz. Ah, son arroz. Sí, arroz. arroz. Ah. Huele muy bien. Sí, huelen rico. Y esta semana es muy... como hay muchas personas, ¿no? Es sí, la con Semana Santa. Es bien para el business. Sí, cabal. <risa> Ya está, ya, un poquitito y ya van a ir. Ya, muy bien. Sí. Ah, mucho gusto. Hola. <risa> Vaya, esta es de queso, Ajá. de frijol con queso. Okay. Y aquí están las que llevan queso, Ay, las rotas y ajá y frijoles. Ok, gracias Carolina, bueno. gracias, gracias. Es Pupu Sad Day. Fuck. Oh. Es muy caliente. Sí. ¿Cómo es? Es muy caliente. Es muy caliente. ¿Sabes lo que huele? ¿Qué? Es literalmente como un. Como un hamburguesa de carne. Y un poco de bacon. Es bueno. Sí, es bueno, pero huele exactamente como lo que tienes en casa. Ya les traigo la salsita. Es como like kimchi. Yeah, those uh, those taste a bit like kimchi. Where are you? Uh, seis pupusas. Cuanta? Seis. Seis. Dos cervezas, pilsner y un sprite. Cincuenta, cinco, siete, ocho caballos. Ay, ¿sabes si dónde el budget? Thank you, Scarlett. Ciao. Bye bye the beach in El Salvador. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, bye. <coughs> Little update and story on El Salvador. So, El Salvador is or used to be a very dangerous country because the homicide level was very high. It was probably one of the highest in the world. Um, the thing is, a year ago, in three days, a lot of people died. Uh, there was a very high level of homicide. And so, uh, the government put the country in a state of emergency and gave power to the police to be able to stop as many people as possible uh, without having to go through all the formal paperwork. This is exactly a year ago in March. Now, El Salvador is very safe. We have been walking in towns, we have been walking at the beach, we have hiked a volcano, we have gone through small villages, driven on small roads, big roads. Everyone has told us, you are very lucky because now the country is very safe and we do feel it. Uh, of course, like any country, things could happen, bad things could happen, but so far everything has been great. As we talk to people around, the great majority said it changed their lives for the better. But it is always good to remember that there are no magical formula. In one year, 64,000 people went to jail. More power and flexibility in the security system can also mean more innocence in jail. So it is something to keep in mind. Although the great majority of the population feels safer, which is the ultimate objective, don't get me wrong, some people are the innocent victims of this change. I didn't get a chance to show you yet, but I think one of my favorite things in El Salvador is the cemeteries. They are super colorful, but they really make an effort in making them like yeah, colorful and sparkling. So I think it's a, a nice thing to discover about El Salvador. Look at this one, he even gets a tree, tree covered with flowers. It's so nice. Religion is extremely important in the country of El Salvador. There's one last thing we wanted to do before leaving the country. Seeing a local procession on the Holy Week. We just arrived in the city of San Miguel and we're trying to go see the uh, Good Friday's procession of Easter. And to find them we just have the, the live stream of the church that is going through the town so we're going to try to find the procession using the live stream so we can actually see it 
in real life. We actually arrived right when the procession was going back in the church. <laughs> Literally, I arrive with the car and we see the procession 50 meters away from the entrance of the church. We park the car and like wherever we can and we run in. <laughs> that was absolutely not planned, but eventually it's not too bad. We missed a bit of the walk in the streets, but we've seen the grand action in the cathedral. Delivery. Delivery. I got the last eight tacos. Oh yeah. Of the booth. Yeah. Nice. He said no to anyone after me. It was a super efficient drive. We arrived <laughs> maybe half an hour ago. We saw the end of a procession. We ate tacos and went out. Yeah. Now to bed. <laughs> now to bed. Oh wow! So we're just like less than a kilometer to the border and we're in a desperate last attempt to eat one last Salvadorian pupusa before crossing. Will we make it? I don't Hopefully. know. We found one last pupusa just before the border. We found it. That is dramatic. She just sold the last pupusa. So our last chance to eat the Salvadoran pupusa is just ending in front of our eyes. So we are at the border between El Salvador and Honduras. And on the Salvadorian side, it's just like when we crossed it the first time, it's super easy, super relaxing. They don't ask you for weird copies at the last minute, you know, like the, the document you just got and then they ask you a copy of that. No, they do the copies themselves in the offices. Super easy. And that's it for our week in El Salvador. We had a very good time and everything went much better than what we had ever imagined. We can feel that El Salvador is doing a lot of effort to try to change around its reputation and make it an easy place to travel. How do you call it? Rodolfo Fito. Rodolfo. Matilde. Matilde. And Nico. 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 Un gustazo, Nico. Mucho gusto. Un gusto, Matilde. Okay, where are you from? Okay. Here. 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 Es ponerlo super bien recto. Es super bien recto. Es el chico para el trabajo. Él sabe. Sí, normal. Exacto. El Salvador gets onto the car. Muchas gracias, Rodolfo. Gracias a ustedes por visitarnos. Wow. And it is super straight and perfect. Va. Qué suerte que. Gracias. Nos vemos. Un gusto. Feliz viaje. Cuídense. Gracias. Dios. Buenas vibras. Cuídense. Gracias. 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 Rodolfo. Muy bien. So this random person came and like gave us those water bottles, and so we asked him to stick the sticker. I think El Salvador really makes efforts to 
make it easier for travelers and more welcoming. It's amazing. Okay, ciao. Ah, c'est une poupou ça, qui? Non, ok. Ok, ahora? Into Honduras. Into Honduras, we're crossing the river of the border. That's it for this week. Now let's see how Honduras goes. If you want to jump on board the Albatross for this world tour, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you discover all those countries one by one with us. See you next week! So we can admire how dirty you are. <laughs> oh my god! Savage! Luckily, right here there is a river and a beach. Look at your face! <laughs> oh.